Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and we've entered the crazy part of the season where we have double game weeks and blank game weeks and we have to be really smart with our transfers and what we do with the team. So this is the part of the season where we'll hopefully get to go up the rank quite a bit and it always seems to be that way. So if you're outside the top 5% and I know quite a few of you are, don't worry about it. We can still get in the top 5% all right. This is the series, as you may, as you may have guessed by now, where we try and get you in the top 5%. We start by looking at what happened in game week 24 and then what we're doing with game week 25. And I'll also, in the middle of all this video, say what I think our chip strategy should be. So this week, we've got a player removed. I've started doing this the last two or three weeks, checking people who I know are following this system, more or less. And nobody has Marshall anymore, so he's now out of the system. I'll not be reporting on him. So the bankers, these are the players that everyone has. Ward, Bueno, Trippier, Shaw, Andreas, Rashford, Martinelli, Haaland. And last week, we had Ward, Bueno and Andreas on the bench. Trippier scored 1, Shaw 6, Rashford 15, Martinelli 6 and Haaland 2. And we suggested that you had Rashford or Haaland as your captain and I would score accordingly to how many people captained each one and it was split roughly 50-50 between the people that I know are doing this. So I've worked out the score on that basis. So if you had Rashford you would have got 30 points if he was your captain. If Haaland was your captain it was 4 so that makes the average for the bankers 38 and a half points. Now, goalkeeper, you would have had one of Edison, Pope, Ramsdale or Kepa. And they scored 2, minus 3, 2, 2. So that was an average of 1 for the keeper. And there were lots of players this week throughout the whole game who got low scores and one or two that got a good score. Defenders, you would have had one of Ake, Gabriel, White, Castagna. Or Tarkovsky. They scored 1 1 1 1, but Castagna was almost certainly on your bench, and then 8. So that's an average of 2.75. You'd have had one of these midfielders, Salah, De Bruyne, Fernandez. They scored 6, 2, and 12. That was an average of 6.7 points. You'd have had one of Saka, Odegaard, Mitoma, or Mares. They scored 6, 8, 2 and didn't play. So the chances are coming off your bench would have been Andreas who would have scored 3 points. So that's an average of 4.75 points. You'd have had two of these forwards, Kane, Darwin, Anketia, Mitrovic, Tony, Nonto. And they scored 5-5-2, five, five, didn't play 2-1. Mitrovic was probably on your bench anyway. That was an average of 6 points because you had two of these. So the global average was very low last week. It was only 44 points. If you've been following this series correctly from the start, the worst you'd have got was 37 this week. The average was 59.7 and the maximum was 85 points. And I looked at the teams of the players that I know are following this and it was pretty split between in the 60s or in the 40s, mostly high 40s, depending on who you captain. I think there was one that I saw in the 50s. 529 subscribers. Thank you very much. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, if you like this sort of stuff. Leave comments, ask questions, likes. They're all good. Chip strategy. If you don't follow what I'm about to say, that's fine. It's enough for you to know that I've got an idea what's going on and what a good strategy is going to be for us. But for those that are interested, I'm going to rattle through this and explain the next few game weeks. This is Ben Krellin's chart. If you're on Twitter, absolutely worth following him. He likes to put this sort of stuff out and it's very, very interesting and good. So game week 25, he's got it coloured as pink here. Pink because there are blank and double game weeks. So from here we can see Brentford, Brighton, Man United and Newcastle are not playing this week. But Arsenal, Everton, Liverpool and Wolves are playing twice this week. So um, there will be some managers who aren't very engaged who are going to be very short of players this week and there'll be some scores in your mini leagues that are like of 20, 30 points probably. There'll be other people free hitting this week and there'll be scores of 80 or 90 this week. Chances are you're going to be somewhere in the middle. I'd guess 
most of you should score between about 60, 70, 80, maybe 90 at a push this week. But we're not going to be playing a chip this week. What I'm going to suggest we do, we need to do some transfers to survive this week. Game 26 is a normal game week. By that I mean every team should be playing once. Game 27 is a double game week for Brentford, Brighton, Crystal Palace and Southampton. The interesting thing with Brighton and Brentford is they're not playing at all this week. But in two weeks time they got two games. Game week 28. We don't know who's going to be blanking yet, but teams will because of the FA Cup. There'd be, I think, at least two, maybe four that would blank. The chances are there could be about 10 that blank. But until we play the FA Cup, which I think is the middle of next week, we're not going to know the exact shape of game week 28. As things stand, game week 28 is probably when we're going to play our free hit chip. If it's the case that you've already played your free hit chip, then game week 28, I suggest you keep following this system and just accept you're not going to have 11 players playing. And I think long term, that would be the best thing. Game week 29 is a double game week. Now hopefully we're going to be able to get a lot of double game week players out there. And that's confirmed for all of these teams that I show there in yellow. Game week 30 and 31, we're back to normal game weeks. Game week 32, again we're going to have some blanks. But we really don't know who's going to blank. Because we need two FA Cup games for each team that's still in there before we get to see the shape of game week 32. So our tactic's going to be we're going to dead end our team into game week 32. That means we're going to be selling players as we get into game week 32, even if they're from a good team, because we don't care that our whole focus is in on game week 32, because in game week 33 we play the wild card, so that we can load up, and in game week 34 we play our bench boost, when we should be able to get out because the double game week somewhere between 25 and 30 players. Hopefully that made a bit of sense. Now something I want to draw your attention to here. Brentford and Brighton double in game week 27 and game week 29. Even though they're blanking this week. So we will be wanting their players in the near future. And I'm going to talk about goalkeepers shortly. And the Chelsea goalkeeper you'll see doubles in 29. The Arsenal goalkeeper doubles this week. And the Everton goalkeeper doubles this week as well. Just scanning. Yep. So Arsenal, Everton and Chelsea, those keepers have all got one double between now and game week 32. So uh, just keep that in mind. And like I said, if all of that went over your head, don't worry about it. Just know that I'm planning for this. I know what's going on and I'll be telling you what to do when. So... I'm going to be talking about blanking players and doubling players. So if we look at my team, on the bench I have Ward and Matoma. You'll see Ward is playing Arsenal and Matoma's got a blank there because he's not playing. So by blanking I mean no game this week. And you can see a double game week player again, my team. I've got Felix is playing Tottenham and Enketia is Leicester and Everton. So when you look at your uh, pick team page, your doublers will have two teams that they're playing. So... Most of you, probably all of you, are going to have to make transfers this week. It's fine to take a hit or even two hits. So if you end up having to take minus four or minus eight points, if it makes your team stronger and sorts things out, that's fine. I would recommend you don't sell an Arsenal player for an alternate Arsenal player. So if you're following, if you go on Twitter, for example, there'd be a lot of managers saying, sell Martinelli and get Saka. That may be worth it, but if it's costing you a hit because you've got other things to do, then I wouldn't recommend doing that at all. But if you've got enough transfers, there's nothing else to do and you want to do it, then that is okay. So you need to see what these transfers are, see which ones are right for you, and then make up to eight points of damage. So you may, if you've got two free transfers, you could do four of these transfers. If you've only got one free transfer, you could do up to three. But don't do transfers just for the sake of it. If you get to the point where you've got 10 playing players this week, or even 11, that's enough. You don't need to obviously do any more than that. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you have Pope, there are three goalkeepers that's worth moving him to. Of course, you can only get one of these. So I'd recommend you either get Ramsdale, Kepper, or Pickford. They've all got the chance over the next few weeks of having some good game weeks and potentially some bad ones. And it's absolutely fine to get rid of Pope. You don't have to get rid of him. It's just, if you want to, you can. 
unless you're busy with other transfers and you want to keep him. If you want to keep him, that's fine as well. He's just got one fewer games than the rest. Defenders. Shaw and Trippier are not playing this game week. So you may want to take one or both of those out and get in Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's 7.3 million Liverpool. Gabriel of Arsenal or Tarkovsky of Everton. So there's a nice big price range there. All three of those should be playing twice this week. Now, if it was me, or what I have done, I've already moved on Shaw, but I've decided to keep Trippier. You can safely keep three blanking players, no problem. And I'm keeping for myself Trippier, Matoma and Rashford. They're the three I'm keeping. If you want to keep four because you've got a lot of money invested, that's fine as well. So any of those three on the right are fine if you want to move out Shaw and or Trippier. Most of you will have more money tied up in Trippier than Shaw, so you might want to keep hold of that. But I know a lot of people are selling Trippier and you may not want to buy him back and that's fine. For midfield, De Bruyne, Fernandes, Matoma and Rashford. De Bruyne's ill and may not be playing this weekend, but in any case, he's a lot of money and hasn't been doing great, so he's worth selling. The other three are not playing. And for those, you might want to take out one or more of those and you could get in a, any combination of Salah, Saka and Odegaard. Now, I would be very happy if I had De Bruyne selling him and I did have De Bruyne and I have sold him. I would not sell Rashford. If you want to sell Rashford, you can, but you'll almost certainly want to buy him back in the next one or two weeks. So it's kind of costing you eight points, four points now to get rid of him and four points to bring him back. But the others, Salah and Saka, Odegaard, if you can get a Salah in because you sold De Bruyne or Fernandes and it doesn't break your team, i.e. you're not really stuck with bad players, then I think Salah's worth getting in. But it's also worth getting in Saka, but most of you will already have three Arsenal players. But anyway, that's the uh, midfield moves. So yeah, happy faces on Salah and Saka saying I'm happy to get those in, happy to sell De Bruyne. For the forwards, Mitrovic and Tony. Mitrovic's probably going to be injured. Tony's not playing this week. So you may want to get in Darwin or Enketia. Both of these are probably going to be right the next few weeks. Darwin seems to be coming good now, starting to get points. Enketia is expected to be gradually phased out in a few weeks' time when Jesus comes back. Perfectly happy selling Mitrovic. If I had him, I'd be happy to sell him. I wouldn't be happy selling Tony because he's got a double game week next week. So I've put him on here because you may have nothing else to do and you've got two free transfers and you can afford to swap Tony to one of these two. I okay, care it's probably worth it and you just bring him back next week. But if you're spent taking hits to do transfers, think carefully before you move on Tony. But it's your team, you do whatever you like. So there, smiley face on Darwin. The bench. So we just talk about the bench. We get the bench right. The other 11 players sort themselves out. So Ward is on your bench. Now, for the rest of your bench, it's a bit different this week. I'm simply saying if you've got any players with blanks or if you have any players that are blanking, just put them on your bench this week. And a lot of you will have three blanking players at least. So that's it. Your bench full. However, there may be one or two of you that have only got two blanking players or maybe even one. So the next players I'm showing you, the first one you see, that then goes on your bench. And the next one you see, if you've got two spaces, they go on your bench. In a way, if you forget to do your bench, it doesn't matter because you'll have so many blanking players that sort themselves out. So I would suggest Castagne, Somerville, Ake, Andreas, Mitrovic, Nonto. They would be the ones that would naturally go on your bench after the blanking players. Regarding captaincy, probably the best two captaincy choices this week would be Salah or Saka. So either of these could wear the old mule hat. If you happen to have both, then make one of your, them your captain, one of them your vice captain. If you've only got one, I'd suggest you make that one your captain. If you have neither, then just choose any other Liverpool or Arsenal player. That'd be my suggestion. And all of you are bound to have at least two Liverpool Arsenal players in total. So if you have neither Salah nor Saka, just choose any of them to be your captain and any other one to be your vice captain. It could be that Liverpool and Arsenal both keep two clean sheets so the defenders are a good choice. Or it might be they score lots of goals so the attackers are good choices. It really is quite random, I guess. <laughs> 
I hope that made sense and I hope it wasn't too complicated. Um, and there we have it. I hope you have a fun game week 25. Expect people in your mini leagues to outscore you this week because some of them are going to be bench boosting. Some will be free hitting. But in the weeks that we play those chips, you'll be outscoring them, hopefully. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.